There is certainly so much to discuss from the weekend's football and to do just that, we're joined by two broadcasters from either side of the EFL Cup final fence. Alex Gilday trot very much the happier man this morning after Liverpool's win. Sam Obaseki less so with Chelsea missing out on silverware. Great to see both of you. And I know that the two of you saw each other at Wembley before the game. Is this the first time you've spoken to each other since? Uh, yeah, it is. And, you know, very, very much uh, respectful to, to Sam for showing up this morning. I, I, like you said, Tom, I did see him yesterday. He was in great spirits. He was on the stage leading the songs, you know, that they were ringing out. I actually, uh, uh, in the true words of Danny Dye, I had to keep my nut down a little bit and make my way out of there. But no, listen, unbelievable night, unbelievable um, performance. So many individual stories that made up how special it was last night for Liverpool. You look at Jurgen Klopp winning um, the first domestic trophy in 10 years. I was at the last final against Cardiff 10 years ago. But then Queen Keller, what a story that is. Um, 14 he was when he started becoming a goalkeeper in Cork in Ireland. Uh, and fast forward less than 10 years later, and he's not only saving penalties, but he's also scoring the winning one. What a story and what a night for Liverpool fans. Yeah, I mean, one of the other big talking points as well, the Kepa sub, Sam, from the Chelsea side of things. What did you make of it? Uh, I think it made perfect sense. I think anyone that supports Chelsea or has been seeing uh, Chelsea when we've um, come down to penalty shootouts, that's a normal substitution uh, to be made. Um, he saved us on countless occasions this season um, from that position. It was it was just unfortunate. Obviously, we, we wouldn't have expected him to not save a penalty and then it come down to him uh, missing the penultimate penalty. But at the same time, because he's he saved us and he played a big part in us even getting to that position in the first place, you can't really be too mad at it. Hey, Alex, if you're watching that as a Liverpool fan and that substitution happens, you're thinking... Right, Mendy's off. Good. Mendy has had a brilliant game. He's a brilliant goalkeeper. Good thing. Are you thinking, actually, changing the goalkeeper just for penalties, they must know how good Kepper is, as Sam said, at saving penalties. Does that get into your head as well? Because it would do for a fan as well as a player. Yeah, well, listen, I was there and I saw Kepper coming on. I knew exactly the game plan. I think he came on maybe just before the, the final minute of extra time. Would have been quite funny, actually, if the ball didn't go out and the substitution wouldn't uh, been able to happen. But in, in, in a way, it's poetic justice. It's almost karma for Kepa. You saw in 2018 what he did with Maurizio Sarri. He didn't want to come off the pitch, um, get substituted on last night uh, and misses the winning penalty. So in a lot of ways, maybe this is, is karma for Kepa. Yeah, I mean, we all remember that incident, of course. But Sam, how much pressure do you think there is on goalkeepers, you know, having to step up and take that penalty? I mean, the pressure must be intense, mustn't it? Yeah, you you never expect as a goalkeeper to have to take that like, the last minute penalty, and I think Keller had almost had the the psychological edge taking the penalty before Kepa and actually slotting it away. But like I said, in that situation, every Chelsea fan understands why Kepa came on. He's made the the most penalty shootout saves the, um, in Chelsea history, so he was confident. We we were confident in him, and it was just like I said, unfortunate that he wasn't able to score the penalty. Yeah, they always say that a goalkeeper can't lose uh, in a penalty shootout in terms of they're either the hero or just nothing. Well, actually, unfortunately for Kepa, with missing that one, that was a different story. But Kelleher, you've talked about him already, Alex. He didn't save a penalty, but he did score one. Now, interestingly, Jurgen Klopp called him the best number two in the world. What will Kelleher make of that? I remember when Solskjaer and Tori andre Flo were super subs, where they were like, I don't want to be a super sub, I want to start. But Kelleher's probably thinking the same thing. Yeah, listen, Kelleher knows he's the, the next in line, um, as it were, to, to Alison Becker. Uh, he's actually now uh, saved us in three different penalty shootout occasions, which makes him the, the keeper for Liverpool with the most ever penalty shootout wins, if you like. So uh, an unbelievable achievement for him. And listen, everyone wants to be the number one. But then again, there are some goalkeepers that are quite content to, to maybe warm the bench. You look at Scott Carson at Manchester City. Um, listen, doesn't play many games, but has a good time on the bench. So it depends about the hunger, the ambition of the goalkeeper. Kelleher, for me, will be Liverpool's number one at some point in the future. But at the minute, listen, if you have to dot your hat there to Alison Becker, who stepped aside for him last night. Jurgen Klopp showed so much loyalty in Kelleher, uh, and it's definitely paid off last night. What a story and um, just an unbelievable journey so far in, in his career. Yeah, I'm staying with Jurgen Klopp and staying with you if we can, Alex, because you're the Liverpool fan here. 
you know, Klopp has won the Premier League, he's won the Champions League already with Liverpool. How important is it for him to get this first domestic cup? So important. There's been a lot of people that say Klopp doesn't respect the domestic cups, speaking about the League Cup and the FA Cup. And yes, it has been a long time since we've won. But Klopp knows about momentum. That's the key word here. And if you watch what Manchester City have done in the past few years, they've won this competition for the last five years. It always leads to more trophies. You win this one in, in February and then March, April comes round. You've really got that momentum and hopefully this can be a season for Liverpool fans, which is unforgettable. And I, I really do feel as if the next couple of months, the next three months are going to be special. So Reds, strap yourselves in. We've got some journey ahead of us, hopefully. <laughs> Sam, towards the end of the transfer window, we talked a lot about Luis Diaz. All right, how impressed have you been with him, not just yesterday, but since he signed for Liverpool? Uh, he's been a quality signing. I think we we saw yesterday why why Jurgen Klopp has, has shown a lot of faith in him. As soon as he gets on that pitch, he's the, literally the typical Jurgen Klopp player. He he works hard. He he's exciting on the ball. He tries flicks and tricks. I think he tried attempted over thirty no look passes yesterday um, um, in that game, just showing the type of confidence he has. And I think uh, Trevor Chalobah did so well. In, in defending him against him for the whole game, he he was actually unfortunate not to, you know, uh, on the uh, on the other end, the case to not get a red card for the challenge and for him to play on in that situation because that was a that was a very controversial decision. But yeah, in terms of of Diaz, I think he had a quality game and I think he's going to be a key player for for Liverpool moving forward. Yeah, and Sam, I mean, how about Romelu Lukaku? He didn't start. Where do you think his long term future lies? I think Lukaku's got, got the mentality to, to become and has always had that mentality to become a Chelsea legend. Um, obviously, there's not been... Um, a f uh, he's had a few situations this season that you can say as a fan you wouldn't have wanted him to be in that situation, but I think he's bounced back quite well. He scored in the Club World Cup, helping us win that, that competition. He came on yesterday. The goal that he scored yesterday, I think it was controversial again. I think that that was a goal and it was, he was unfortunate not to get that decision. Thomas Tuchel said that it was it was a weird line and I, I, I do completely agree. But I think Lukaku's definitely going to, you know, step it up. And he, he understands in this game when you have when you have players like Havertz, Werner, Mount, so many forwards that are willing and want to do so much work. You just have to do do your work when you can and score when you can as well. Yeah, Becky, I probably should have warned you beforehand that Sam is a massive Romelu Lukaku fan. He absolutely <laughs> loves him. Right, Alex, you're a big fan of Jurgen Klopp. Now, managers always play down the talk of a quadruple or even a treble, even a double. Can Liverpool win the quadruple, in your opinion? I was asking people the same question last night and obviously the emotion of the game was running high. A lot of fans were saying the quadruple is on. Me, personally, I would be more than happy with at least two trophies this season. Listen, the quadruple, it's not been done before in this country. We would be seeing something that's never been, been achieved. Manchester City, with all their might and power, they haven't been able to achieve it. But, listen, the Premier League is, is one thing. We've still got a lot of work to do in that, and there's still 11 games to go there. The FA Cup is a bit closer. We've got Norwich in the week. If we get through that and get a nice draw, who knows? And the Champions League as well. You can never write Liverpool out of that because... European Knights uh, seem to be our favourite. So, can we do it? Yes. Will we do it? It remains to be no. seen. But listen, we have to be hopeful. <laughs> uh, I know Sam, Sam might not think so. We've already taken one off of him this season. But you've had enough, mate, in the last 25 years. So, you know, share them around. <laughs> you don't think they can then, Sam? I'd, I, I, from the final that we had yesterday, maybe it's just from a Chelsea perspective, but... I think that we were the, the dominant team in, in, in that game. And I think that Liverpool moving forward, yeah, they're gonna they're probably gonna go to the latter stages of most competitions, but because they're still firing on all on in all the competitions and there's still so many quality teams in the Champions League, in in the FA Cup, I think it's gonna be quite difficult for them to, you know, focus on all of these competitions. But we'll see. You know, you never you never know. But I, I'd like to think that it's just not happening. <laughs> well, Sam, what do you think about Chelsea then? I mean, you're out of the title race. Um, so what are your aims for the rest of the season? What does a good season look like? Um, I think I think we, we've still got a solid chance of, of progressing further in the Champions League and the FA Cup. 
Um, one thing that Chelsea have done really well in the past is is brush ourselves off and and just go again. We've we've lost finals in the past. Last season, um, we lost the FA Cup final and then we went on to win the Champions League final. Just just showing the mentality that the team has and what Tuchel, but how Tuchel prepares the team in a sense to to know that there's many competitions that we're in. We just came off of the back of winning the Club World Cup as well. So yeah, I think we definitely have the opportunity to to win a few trophies this season. Right, Alex, on Saturday, Manchester City beat Everton 1-0, all right? So that was bad news for Liverpool. Uh, give us your honest opinion on that potential handball where VAR did not give Everton a penalty late on. To see that the referees have, have actually come out after and said it is a penalty it just makes it even more disappointing. Um, I do admire their honesty and I do think referees should be allowed to come out more and tell us why they've made these decisions or why they haven't made certain decisions and that was so clear uh, I mean it's literally hit the, the arm the, the sleeve I don't know what he might as well have picked up and started bouncing it around playing basketball <laughs> in, in my opinion it, it makes it unfair because it almost ruins the league for everyone else and it's not just Liverpool it, it's, uh, it's the paying fan that's watching these games at home and seeing these poor decisions and again um, I have to reiterate the fact that I do think in, unfortunately in the Premier League we do have one of the worst standards of refereeing in Europe and, and that just shows why.